Welcome to the basics of instancing. In this video, we'll look at the principles and concepts of instancing to better understand how we can use this technique. Let's get started by adding a box SOP here to our network, and let's connect our box SOP to a geometry component. Instances are copies of our geometry that are handled exclusively on the GPU, which makes them a far more efficient way to think about drawing and manipulating many copies of a piece of geometry. There are a few things that we'll need to do to make sure that our instancing workflow is set up correctly. Let's head to the instance page of our geometry component and let's turn on instancing. Here what we'll need to do is we'll need to set an op or an operator that is the source of the data that's going to describe our positions. To get started we'll look first at how we can do this with a constant chop because this will be a simple way for us to see all of the different attributes that we're going to control. I'm going to connect my constant chop here to a null chop. And let's go ahead and set that to be our default instance op for now. Now I'd like to describe my position for my operator or for my instances rather from our operator, con our constant chop. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a few channels to describe that. So we might have a TX, a TY, and a TZ channel. Next on our geometry component, let's head over to the instance page and we'll see that we have attributes for translate X, translate Y, and translate Z. Let's make sure those match the channels we wanna pull that data from. And we'll see that what's happening here is that we have a channel called TX, and that is in fact what we're using here to describe our TX translation. If we zoom out just a little bit here on our geometry component, we'll see as we start to move this channel up and down, that's going to affect the position of our instance. Now, what's interesting and fun about this is that let's make a copy here of our constant chop. Let's use a join chop. A join chop will merge together our channel operators and we'll put their samples in sequence to one another. So we can see here if we turn on dots, that what we have is we have a dot for our first sample and a dot for our second sample. In this case, every sample inside of our channels describes another instance. So for example, if we move an instance over here to the right at positive two, and we come back here to our first uh, constant chop, and we set this to be negative two, we now have a way to describe two different instances that whose information is just contained here inside of our channel data. Let's make a copy again here and see what happens if we add a third. So I'm gonna plug that in. I'll set my TX parameter to zero. And now we can see that we have three different instances. These are all being handled by the GPU. So this is a far more efficient way for us to think about how we're working with multiple copies of geometry. Now, this isn't the only set of attributes that we can manipulate. And in fact, if we head over to our geometry component, we'll see that there's a whole nother set of attributes that we might manipulate as well. So let's go ahead and think about how we might actually add some more of these. I'm going to go ahead and scoot my constant chop over here for one moment. I'm going to connect it to the first input here for my constant two and constant three, because I'd like to add a few more channels. Let's add three more channels here. So we might have an RX and RY and an RZ for rotation. And here on my other operators, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a snapshot so I can capture all those channels. I've gotta change their positions and that's okay, uh, but that'll make it a little bit easier for me to update these quickly. Let's go ahead and reset this. So our first, our second instance is gonna be at two. Our third instance is gonna be at a TX position of zero. And let's go ahead and update some rotation values. So I might rotate in X 45 degrees on my first instance, and then 45 degrees in my second instance, and then 45 degrees in RZ on my third instance. Back on our geometry, nothing has changed yet. And that's because we need to actually set our rotate parameters to correctly pull from their respective channels. So we have an RX, we have an RY, and we have an RZ. And we can see how that's then applied to our instances. Let's take a look at scale here. Now, we might think about this as a single value to scale our instance, but we could also scale our instances uh, in the X, Y, and Z dimensions separately. So let's add three more. And we might call this SX, 
SY and SZ. And let's get these default values of 1, 1, 1. We'll do the same thing. We'll head over. We'll take a snapshot of our channels. We're going to need to update these, but that's all right. So we can actually see how this will affect our resulting instances here. Here in constant 2, let's go ahead and make this positive 2. Let's turn down the rotation and turn it up in Y. And on our third instance, let's go ahead and again, change this back to 0 for our X, 45 for RZ. And let's put this instance back in the center. Now we have some scale uh, channels that we can manipulate here as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if maybe we turn those down or change them. Now, nothing is updating yet. That's all right. Let's head back to our geometry component and make sure here that we've selected the channels that we'd like to pull that data from. So we have SX, SY, and we have SZ. So we now have a way to manipulate these copies of our geometry here just by thinking about how we are changing their uh, channels. Let's take a look at one other parameter that we might want to also manipulate. So on our geometry component, let's head over to the instance two page and we'll see that we have a number of interesting uh, parameters that we might manipulate. And in this case, let's take a look here. We have a color parameter. So let's add a set of color channels. So I'm going to add three more channels. Let's add an R, a G, and a B channel. And I'm going to go ahead and make these all white for now. We're going to do the same thing. Let's take a snapshot of all of our channels here. And then let's update their values. Before we do that this time, let's go ahead and let's change our target parameters for the channels we're going to pull that data from. We already happen to know what we're going to do. So let's make sure that we grab the R channel for red. We grab the green channel for green. And we grab the blue channel for blue. Now we should see that as we start to manipulate our channels, we'll have some interesting things that show up here for us. Now I might, for example, want to make this first instance red. Now all of my instances are here together. So let's move these around a little bit more. Uh, we know that our second instance is over here too. And our third instance is here right in the middle. Perfect. Let's go ahead here on our constant two on our second instance. We might make this one just a blue instance. I like that. We'll turn down the rotation. We'll turn up the rotation of 45. And let's go ahead and also manipulate maybe the scale here slightly for this instance. We'll get a little closer so we can see that better. Finally, let's manipulate our constant three here. Let's make sure this is actually our green instance. Lovely. And we can see that as we manipulate these parameters, our instances update immediately right in front of us. Now this is pretty exciting because it means that we have a lot of different ways that we might think about manipulating and controlling these and building animation that's highly optimized for how we think about working with our geometry uh, here as instances. There's lots more that we can do with instances and in fact one of the important distinctions that we might make is that while we've gone ahead in this case we've used one default instance or one default instance op to describe all of the data that we want to use to drive our instances attributes, we can in fact pull that from separate operators. So in this case, we're using just a single operator, but we could instead set a separate op for our translate data for rotation and information for our scale information and all of the things that we might find here on our second page as well. There's lots more we can do with instances, but this is a starting po point for how we can understand the crucial fundamental pieces that are important for working with instances.